Hello and many thanks for joining us. You're watching Addis News Hour with the news. I'm Tabitha John. Do stay with us. <laughs> Ethiopian democracy activist Tesho Meborago says Biden administration's call for the disarmament of TPLF and all insurrectionists in Ethiopia is a quote unquote sick joke. After all, the United States has been at the forefront of pushing sanctions on Ethiopia and giving a diplomatic and morale boost for both TPLF and Egypt. President Biden's near year wish to Ethiopia remains to be a top agenda among many Ethiopians. Alula Teklamariam has more. Ethiopia's poor democracy activist, the Shome Porago, is the one to quickly reply to White House's wish on Ethiopia's New Year. He blamed the Biden administration for issuing statement after statement, condemning Ethiopia over alleged human rights violations and the use of hunger as a weapon of war in the Tigray region of Ethiopia. The statement said, Jill and I send our best wishes for a happy new year to all the people of Ethiopia and Eritrea and all those around the world celebrating in Kutatash, including hundreds of thousands of Americans with Ethiopian and Eritrean heritage. Many Ethiopian worldwide were also caught off guard when the White House posted this New Year message to Ethiopians after a whole year of Biden's administration supporting and legitimizing insurrections in Ethiopia. The majority of Ethiopians thought Biden's message was a sick jog. Ethiopians could not believe their eyes when the White House released the New Year statement. After all, the United States has been at the forefront of pushing sanctions on Ethiopia and giving a diplomatic and moral boost to both TPLF and Egypt. And Tashoma listed five ways to fix what he said Biden's sick jog on Ethiopia's New Year message. Accordingly, he suggested the Biden administration to call for the disarmament of TPLF and all insurrectionists in Ethiopia. This would help push militants with global networks to pursue peaceful and legal ways. U.S. must end its political support for Q agents in Africa. Stop using both sides' argument to legitimize rebellion and U.S. economic and military support through sanctioning Ethiopian economy and leadership to TPLF. And secondly, substantially increase direct investment and trade with Ethiopia. Furthermore, the U.S. America is recommended to stop geopolitical-based blockage of international financial institutional funds to Ethiopian projectors. America blocking IMF and World Bank funds from supporting major infrastructure projects like the GERD has devastated Ethiopia's economy and foreign currency reserves. The dangerous tilting of the balance of military power in North and East Africa where Egypt gets huge military fund while Ethiopia not leads to criticism as US is promoting power imbalance and endless wars. Meanwhile, the author calls upon the U.S. government to promote in Ethiopia and the same pro-unity and anti-nativism values like they cherish at home in America. President Biden's New Year wish to Ethiopia remains to be a top agenda among many Ethiopians. Cuban ambassador to Ethiopia says U.S. intervention in Ethiopia's domestic affairs is against international law and U.N. charter. She also says America's goal in sanctioning is for countries regime change and not human rights protection. Sentayo Tamrat has the following report. There is no other country except Cuba that has received the most severe and longest sanctions by the U.S. successive governments. In 2007, the U.N. General Assembly adopted a resolution to end a half-century U.S. blockade on Cuba. On that event, Cuban Foreign Minister quoted a declassified United States government document from 1960 by then-Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for Inter-American Affairs, Lester David Mallory saying that the purpose of the embargo was to weaken the economic life of Cuba, denying many supplies to Cuba, to decrease monetary and real wages, to bring about hunger, desperation, 
and overthrow of government. And the U.S. action against Cuba was dubbed an act of genocide as defined by the 1948 Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide and an act of economic warfare under the conclusion is reached at the 1909 London Naval Conference. Senor Pre the President of the United States has no right at all to pass judgment on any other sovereign nation on this planet. Having powerful nuclear weapons provides no right whatsoever to tread upon the rights of the peoples of the other 191 countries represented here. And the determination and courage of the peoples should not be underestimated when it comes to defending their rights. After all, what prevails is not the power of cannons, but the fairness of the ideas for which you are fighting. In this context, Cuban ambassador to Ethiopia Vilma Thomas told ETV English that the blockade that has been hugely violating rights of the Cuban population is, has brought huge impact on the life of Cubans. In the last two years during the pandemic, you have seen also the cruelty of the, of the blockade because it has impact in Cuba's uh, ability to fight against the pandemic. No regulations were lifted of the blockade during the time of the pandemic and even more regulations were added during Trump administration, who added 243 more measures to tighten the blockade and make our life even more difficult. But because despite all those difficulties, as you mentioned, for 60 years now, we have been able to resist and endure and develop. And we are very proud that although it has cost a lot and uh, it has been, you know, seven out of ten Cubans have lived all their, all their life under this blockade. She also says the U.S. goal in sanctioning countries leads to change of regime and not human rights protection. Actually, the blockade is the highest and the violation of the human rights of the, the entire Cuban people and the main obstacle to our development up to now. But the real reason they, they wanted to maintain the blockade is that they wanted to, to, uh, to change the, the system that the Cuban people give to itself. They wanted to change our government. And despite the majority of the population supporting uh, the government, they keep on trying to overthrow the, the Cuban government. They have been doing that. They cannot accept that just 90 miles from the U.S., we have a different kind of government to the one they wanted to impose on us. The current U.S. intervention in Ethiopia's domestic affairs is against international law and UN charter, Ambassador Vilma Thomas said. We are against any sort of uh, unilateral sanctions. We think that uh, unilateral sanctions are against uh, international law, are against the charter of the UN, and are, are against the basis of the multilateral system. You know, no countries have really the right to, to impose sanctions on others. I think the, the, the way to handle any kind of situation should be um, multilateral cooperation, constructive engagement. That's what we have been promoting at a multilateral level. And, and those are the, the basis of, uh, in which any situation uh, should be addressed. And this is the case of Ethiopia. Speaking on the Ethiopia-Cuba relation, the two countries have now attained a very good cooperation with a number of agreements signed and some being implemented in areas like education, health, technology, trade and agriculture, the ambassador mentioned. Our relations are in a very good shape right now. We have a lot of agreements we have been working on. Some of them have already been signed and have been implemented. Uh, and some others uh, are in a very advanced stage of negotiation. We are working in agreements in health, in education, in science and technology. Agreement between our chambers of commerce in order to promote also our trade relations. Ethiopia and Cuba have strong bilateral ties for over 45 years now. And then the Giziat, and all on a fasnacho, Mogadacho Baratal. And then the Giziat, Wajabal Nacho, 
ማአበላቾ ይገስፋል አንድ አንድ ጊዜያት እሳት ናቸው ወላፈናቸው ያግናል አንድ አንድ ጊዜያት የጦርነት ናቸው የጦፈ ፍልሞች አንዳንድ ጊዜያት ይሁሉ አልፎ የጸጥታ ይሆናሉ ሰላም በመድሪቷ ላይ ነክሳል ጊዜ ይለወጣል እኛ ግን ጸንተን እንቆማለን ሀገር ማለት እኛ ነን Welcome back. TPLF clique has committed the killing of innocent civilians in Warrababu, Tawladara and Zarima towns in South Wollo and North Gondar zone in the state of Amhara. The TPLF gangs have killed 24 innocent civilians in Warrababu and Tawladara towns and also engaged in mass looting in the region. Habtamu Ashagri has more. This is Toiba Muhammad who is a resident of Galan town and her husband was killed by TPLF gangs. The father of four has been killed and the TPLF terrorists have not allowed Toiba to bury the body of her husband for many days in the region. We have not seen such agony. My husband was a farmer. He has taken his children and oxen in the farmland. but they have chased him and killed him i found his clothes not his body even i couldn't bury him his brothers tried to find his corpse but they couldn't my husband has no business except farming ela nagara yakab ela nagara mi yakab nagara illa ndu asqarru ndu asqarru ndu asqarru said yusuf who is a farmer and his brother killed by TPLF mafia said they have shot and killed his brother cruelly zimbulu negedul They killed my brother without a reason. At the moment, I was hiding around. I heard that my brother told them that he was poor, but they replied that they are coming to kill every Amhara in the region. After this chat, they shot him on his forehead. According to residents, the TPLF terrorists have looted all their properties and killed all domestic animals in the region. Over the past weeks, the TPLF gangs have committed mass looting and destruction of infrastructures in Darima town, North Gondar zone in the state of Amhara. As ye tafattaru wa sigdisat wala In the afternoon they came to this area. We tried to tell them to stop wrong deeds in the region, but they have been trying to kick us. Then we were shocked and got back to our home. After that they have looted everything they wanted and ran out of the town. After they committed looting in the town they have entered into mosques in the mosque some muslims were praying then after they have forced them to bring money and took it away recently the ethiopian national defense force the amara special force and mengaza security forces clutched some south wollo and north gondor towns from the terrorist plf
Ethiopian Water, Irrigation and Energy Minister, Dr. Engineer Seleshi Bekelem, has met with the Kenyan Energy Minister, Charles Ketter, here in Addis Ababa today. The two discussed on completion of construction, guidelines for operation and powerhouse purchase agreement on Ethiopian energy interconnection. The technical teams from Ethiopia and Kenya will conclude drafting of the agreement. The system is an investment of 1.3 billion US dollars with modern 500 kilovolt line, an important vehicle for East Africa interconnection and nucleus for regional integration and prosperity. The Ethiopian Charities and Civil Societies Agency has issued warning against NGOs that are said to have engaged in dangerous activities jeopardizing the nation's well-being. It will take serious measures against the NGOs found blameworthy of engaging in any menacing act that puts sovereignty, unity and security of the nation at risk. Director General of the agency, Fasika Omula, underlined that serious measures ranging from written warnings to cancellation of licenses will be taken against the NGOs that are breaching laws of the country. The agency has been conducting an investigation over the last months to see if NGOs are complying with the charity's law and found some of the NGOs operating against the well-being of the nation under cover of humanitarianism. Ambassador of South Sudan to Ethiopia, James Peter Morgan, asserted that peace in Ethiopia is peace for Africa, calling the country one of the most important nations in the region. The ambassador reaffirmed commitment of South Sudan to help Ethiopia overcome the problem it is facing now. Regarding the Ethiopia-Sudan border dispute, the ambassador noted that the two countries are matured enough to solve their problems through peaceful mechanisms. He explained that if countries of the region are able to resolve their problems peacefully, they can develop infrastructure and be economically integrated and prospered. The ambassador expressed his confidence that 10 years from now, the region will be peaceful and economically integrated. And finally, the International Coordinating Council of UNESCO's MAN and the Biosphere Program, MAB ICC, will meet for the 33rd session in Abuja, Nigeria, from 13th to 17th September 2021.